In today's video, we are going to review all the foods from Squid Game Drama Season 1. And I'm going to share all the recipes with you so that you can enjoy these classic Korean dishes and snacks at home. I'm also going to share lots of context for each of these Korean dishes and snacks. Ojinga Game Drama is now in the world of Oh boy, this is hot. All right, so before we begin, I want to tell everyone to make sure to check the description box below, which will contain all the time codes and the foods for each episode of Squid Game Drama, as well as the recipe links and product links and other information as well. Time code wa recipe link in the description section. Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. 안녕하세요, Modern Pepper의 Helen입니다. Alright, episode 1 includes soybean sprouts soup called 콩나물국, 떡볶이, spicy rice cakes, and grilled mackerel fish, 고등어구이. Okay, so this is a scene where our main character, Song Ki-hoon, is pouting to his mom for more spending money. By the way, in the US media outlets, they spell Song Ki-hoon as Song Ki-hun. There's a WH sound of hun, so it's Ki-hun, not Ki-hun. So this table setting reflects a very, very modest budget. Kongnamulguk is one of the most economical soups that you can make. But it is a classic Korean soup enjoyed and loved by all Koreans. Kongnamulguk is known for its clarity and broth and also for that really refreshing and mild taste of the broth. If you never had it, you're missing out so you need to have it. And I have the recipe in my Instagram post and I'll link that recipe link in the description box. Tteokbokki. So in this scene, Instead of ki taking out his daughter for birthday dinner for fried chicken like he was supposed to, he ended up buying her tteokbokki. And tteokbokki is a spicy rice cakes dish. It is a beloved, quick and easy snack-esque food in Korea. So I would compare tteokbokki as something like how pizza is here in the United States. It's simple, it's inexpensive, and you could have it just in a simple way, or you could upgrade it and make it sort of artisanal. So the varying degree of how simple you could have tteokbokki to how fancy you could have is huge. And here is my tteokbokki recipe. It is a simple recipe, and I also have a fancy version called kungjung tteokbokki, as well as lat tteokbokki, which includes ramen and much more, and also how to make tteokbokki fried rice, with the leftover tteokbokki sauce. Oh yeah, that is so good. And spicy cheese tteokbokki. Oh, that is really good too. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna give you a lot of context of the food that's included in Squid Game Drama. They are eating their tteokbokki in a makeshift restaurant called Pojang Matcha. And Pojang Matcha was a makeshift restaurant that started way back when, probably like 70s, 80s. It is a place to go to get your simple dishes such as tteokbokki, noodles, and side dishes to have with your soju. But Pojang Matcha is no longer the place to go for inexpensive foods. I mean, the prices there are just as high as your local restaurants because Pojang Matcha is a nod to the olden days to enjoy that moment of nostalgia. And you see right here, I know many of you ask, why is tteokbokki served on a plate with like a plastic bag? It sounds odd, right? Because that is the most economical way uh, rather than spending money on paper plates or having to do dishes at these uh, sort of makeshift restaurants. 
Now on to grilled mackerel. So mackerel in Korean is called kodunga. It is made in a very, very simple way, but it is one of those super popular fish dishes in Korean cuisine. We also call it kogalbi because we grill it and then we also wrap it up in lettuce wrap, which I will show you in a little bit. So when it comes to making grilled mackerel fish, make sure to get a whole fish and not one of these pre-filleted mackerel fish that comes in a package because these tend to be really heavily salted and the purpose of having grilled mackerel fish as your main entree is to have it really just slightly salty so that you can really get a true taste of that sweet mackerel meat taste which is so yummy and then we're going to lightly season with a little bit of salt maybe about two pinches of salt like so and some freshly ground black pepper and that's it set your heat to high and let it preheat for about a good minute. And then once your frying pan is preheated, bring your heat to medium high. And we're gonna put about a tablespoon of oil. And then we're gonna put the flesh part down first. So if you don't hear the sizzling sound when the fish hits the frying pan, that means your frying pan was not preheated. And then we're gonna loosely cover it with aluminum foil and let the mackerel cook for about a good two to three minutes or until slightly golden brown. So it's been about a little over two minutes. Oh, look at that. So you wanna to check to make sure your color looks nice and golden brown like that. Use your hand to pick it up. This side is still cold. So just flip it over. Ooh. So that's the color you wanna have. And then loosely cover with the foil again and we're just going to let the other side cook for about two to three minutes again on medium high heat. Okay, so it's been about two minutes and this is done. So the other side should look like this. And we're just going to get up, put it on the plate like so and it's done. To make our lettuce wrap, sam. Use any lettuce of your choice. This is called genyip perilla leaves. You don't have to add this, but it's an option. Just a small amount, rice, piece of our grilled mackerel, godunga gui, and a little bit of samjang, like that. So this is our pamuchim. So it's scallion side salad with oi cucumber together like that and then I want you to press down and fold it in half and then roll it tight 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 like that and then in goes into your mouth like that you always want to make your Korean lettuce wraps one bite size all right episode number two includes the famous cup lamia from the convenience store the vending machine coffee and the ice pops called jujuba and samnyang ramyeon with soju. Okay, so way back when, before shin ramyeon became the king of cup ramyeon, sabalmyeon was the king of cup ramyeon. And I'm gonna show you a hack on how to enhance the taste of your cup ramyeon. So take out everything, use that here, then we're gonna add one egg to the bottom, like that. Then we're just gonna fill it with some boiling water. Then we're gonna add a small pinch of salt and then put it in the microwave. And we're gonna let this run for 35 seconds to a minute. If you want your eggs to cook longer, do it for a minute. And look at that. So the egg is almost cooked. So depending on your microwave power, it might take longer or less. And then we're gonna add our noodle in here. And then our soup packet right on top. Then our scallions, just the green part, just a little bit. Here's just like two pieces of kimchi. Less than one tablespoon of kimchi and just chop it up with your kitchen shears and put it in here. We're gonna pour our boiling water on top like so, right up to the line. And then we're gonna put our seal on and then put your lid on it. Now, the secret is to keep this really warm. So take your kitchen towel and just cover it like so and wait three minutes. 
Let's see how it looks. Ooh, look at that. Here's the egg that we cooked. Still looks good. And here's the tiny pieces of kimchi with the scallion. I mean, that's what makes your instant cup ramen taste less instant-like. And you just need one piece of kimchi with your ramen and there you go. Here we go. In this scene, you notice how this coffee vending machine is really, really old. The production team is amazing. I grew up in the 80s in Korea, and I've never seen a vending machine this old, so they really dug deep and hard to find this vending machine that looks really, really old, and I love it. Now, in Korea, people love coffee. Oh God, this is so hot, I'm gonna take everything off. So in Korea, coffee is very, very big. I mean, there are some serious connoisseurs of coffee drinkers. Yep, even our character Kang Sebek's shady human trafficker freshly grinds his coffee beans for his pour over. And there's so many cafes that sell really high-end gourmet coffee that are like $20 a cup. But as much as Koreans love these super gourmet coffee, we also love Taban coffee. Taban coffee basically refers to instant coffee that is made super strong and sweet and light with a creamer. This individual packet coffee is uh, so good. It's your afternoon pick-me-up and this is how you make it. Okay, so in this scene, our character Kang Sebelk is at the orphanage trying to console her little brother. Um, it's a really sad scene, huh? Uh, anywho, so she shows up with one of these looking guys. First of all, I want to show you how you open it. This is how you do it. You slap your hand and you go and it pops up like that. Yes, that is the official way to enjoy one of these suckers. Uh, I'm just kidding. She calls it ice cream there, but ice cream is a generic term that we use in Korea for all these like frozen icicle pops and such. This is the origin of this simple guy. It's called chuchuba. So back then when I was really little, this is what we had. Soon after that, we started having variations. So this one is the milk kiss one that I love. And this one is my other favorite too. And this is one of the old school ones. And it is not as sweet. Yes, Koreans don't like our desserts to be as sweet as um, how we have it here in the States. So good. This one's made out of chocolate. Now, if you go to a big Korean supermarket, go to the freezer section and you'll see these two majorly old school popsicles. And popsicles in Korea is called hadu. These two are made with sweet beans. I know it sounds really odd, but don't knock it until you try it. It is so bueno. It's really, really good. <laughs> so in this scene, Ki Hoon and Ilam meet up accidentally in front of a convenience store. So let me first begin by saying in Korea, when we refer to drinking cocktails, in literal translation, we say, let's eat our cocktails. So we say, sul mokja, not sul mashija. That kind of reflects how uh, seriously we enjoy drinking. And Samyang Lamyeon is the first Korean Lamyeon made. I grew up eating this and this is still one of my favorites. You ask why are they having raw instant ramen with soju? Because they know what they're doing. Or at least the director and the writer of Squid Game knows exactly what he's doing. So when you have it uncooked, we call it Seng Lamyeon. And this is an old school favorite way to enjoy Lamyeon. I grew up eating it raw like this. You break it up into big chunks. And you put the soup powder packet in there and you shake it. And then you eat it and it is, uh, it just, it's so good. Like it's crunchy, salty. And then if you love the taste of potato chips, let me just tell you, this is gonna take you to uh, snack heaven. <laughs> 
So when you drink soju, because we say we eat our cocktails, literally we have side snacks with it or side dishes with it, and that's called anju. And even if you don't have any food, you could literally have kimchi as your anju with soju. It's a very humble way to enjoy it, but try it one day. It's so good together. And I actually have a video a recipe on reviewing Korean instant ramen that also includes two ways to make ramen. And then I'll also include other video links for ramen recipes. So do check them out in the description box below. Cheers. We say gombe in Korean. And then you turn. <sighs> oh, that was bold of me. <laughs> anyway, so you'll also notice that in this scene, Kiyun is serving Ilam with his left arm on top of his belly, pouring with his right hand. That is a custom in Korea that is, if you don't follow it, you will get totally slapped. I mean, not literally, but if you pour an elder or someone that you just met, especially in a business setting, you want to be respectful, put your left hand on your stomach, and then you pour with your right hand. It's a cultural custom, especially when you're drinking soju. Ta-da! Change of outfit! <laughs> Episode 3 includes doshirak, which is the lunch box, the pastry called soboro pang or kombu pang, and poki which is unfortunately mistakenly called honeycomb candy and also dalgona and the proper name is boki and I'm going to explain that more a little bit later. All right, so let's start with the toshirak. Now, if you want to go straight to the side dish recipes that are included in the toshirak, go to the timeline that you see right here. Otherwise, stay here with me because I'm going to give you a little context of this toshirak. Okay, so the toshirak container, first of all, it's circa 1980 or even earlier. So this stainless steel toshirak was commonly used when I went to school in Korea. It was before the invention of plastic food safe containers and the airtight containers that we commonly use now. So this is not something that you would find now, which is why I had a hard time getting a hold of this here in the States. And in this scene, Ki Hoon is telling Sang Hoo of their you know, nostalgic story of how they used to eat this toshirak. And he's talking about how it was on a top of a stove and such. So let me give you some context around that. So long, long time ago when I was in school, and this goes back to before central heating system was available in schools, during the winter months to heat up the classroom, we had this like stove that was placed in the center of the classroom and it would always be on. And about an hour before lunchtime, everyone used to take their toshira container out and stack it, as you can see right here. So when Ki Hoon is talking about nurangji, the crusty, crunchy rice that he's referring to, you know, by the time the toshira would heat up, you would get this crusty rice on the bottom. So I actually have a video on how to make Korean rice, which includes how to make nurangji, which is uh, amazing. If you love rice, ah, oh, it's so good. You're missing out if you've never had that, so have it. So the toshirak that you see right here contains three panchans. One is the black bean braised in soy sauce. We call that kongjaban or kongjang or kongjorim. And the second one is merchi bokum, which is stir-fried dried anchovies. And the third is kimchi. <laughs> so to make our kongjaban, we need black beans. These are green kernel black beans. In Korean, they're called sorite. You could also use soybeans, mejukum. You could also use gorbanzo beans. So those will work as well. Half a cup of black beans. I want you to put the beans on the plate and look for any of the uglies, like this one, you see, that needs to be taken out. Then put the beans in a bowl and lightly rinse 
in cold water. Put the beans in a pressure cooker pot. And we're gonna add one and a half cup of cold water. Half cup, one cup, one and a half cup. One clove of garlic. And one small piece of tashima, that's dried sea kelp. And one tablespoon of Jinganjang or all-purpose soy sauce works. Set your stove to high. Put your pressure cooker lid on and then lock it. And once the pressure cooker reaches its maximum pressure, lower your heat to low and wait 20 minutes. I know, I hear you. So if you don't have a pressure cooker, you could follow the same recipe using a pot but make sure to pre-soak the dried beans for three hours on your kitchen counter in cold water. 20 minutes later, turn this off and then slowly release the steam. Once the pressure has been released, open. Okay, so you could continue cooking in this pressure cooker pot, but I'm gonna transfer it here so I can show you how to cook the rest. Turn your heat back up high. And then you could keep your tashima in here or take it out and discard it or just eat it. And then I'm taking out the garlic. So I want you to cook this and reduce the broth that you see right here to half. So we're gonna keep it on high heat. So it's been less than two minutes and already the liquid has reduced to half. So at this point, we're gonna turn down the heat to medium. We're gonna add one tablespoon of jinganjang. If you don't have jinganjang, all-purpose soy sauce will work just as fine. And then we're gonna add one tablespoon of kukkanjang. If you don't have kukkanjang, again, just use all-purpose soy sauce. And we're gonna add half a tablespoon of brown sugar, and then half a tablespoon of honey. You could also use bulyad, which is rice syrup, or oligodang. I'm gonna use honey because honey is the most healthiest option. And we're just gonna add a tiny drizzle of oil, about half a tablespoon, and then mix it again. And it's ready. You want the beans to taste somewhat al dente so it has a bite when you eat it. At the end, you should have some amount of liquid like so. You want to have some of this liquid so that the beans continue soaking and marinating in this soy sauce mixture. And you also want to taste it at this point because you don't want to make it too sweet, but it should be slightly salty so that when you have it with rice, it will be really, really yummy. Now on to making our stir-fried anchovies, mirchi bokkum. These medium-sized dried anchovies are called chung mirchi, and these big guys are called tashi mirchi, and these big guys are only for making broth with, and we wanna use these medium-sized ones that are perfect for making stir-fried mirchi pokum. You could also use those tiny, tiny little ones as well. These peppers are called guadikochu, commonly known as shoshito peppers here in the States. So after you rinse your shishito peppers or guadikochu, just take the stem off like that. Preheat your frying pans on high heat for about a minute. I want you to drizzle some oil, about a good tablespoon, and we're gonna add six guadikochu. On super high heat, we're gonna add a pinch of salt and a little bit of black pepper. And let this cook on high heat until we get a little bit of charred mark on it. So just until you get a little bit of blistered mark like that. And then just flip it over. And we're gonna add a quarter of a medium onion. And just quickly saute it like this for a good 15 seconds on super high heat. And then we're gonna lower our heat to medium. And then we're gonna push everything to the side, like that. And then we're gonna add a tablespoon of oil. 
Then we're going to add a one cup of medium-sized dried anchovies. And then we're just going to lightly just kind of pan fry it on medium heat. And I want you to know that these guys are salty already, so we don't need to salt our anchovies. And then just lightly saute it for about a good two minutes. As soon as the anchovies turn just slightly brown like that, it's ready. So we're gonna push this to the side, like so. I want you to tilt the frying pan a little bit at an angle like that. A tablespoon of water. And then we're gonna add half a tablespoon of garlic. Let that kind of cook. Half a tablespoon of brown sugar. Half a tablespoon of soy sauce, all purpose is fine, or chinganjang. So once it starts bubbling over like this, the garlic has cooked, the sugar has cooked, and then we just mix it up like that. And this is basically done. That's how quick and easy it is to make this. So it should taste somewhat salty and just slightly, slightly sweet. Here we go, and just top it off with an egg. And there we have it. Squid Game Toshirak. And in this scene, they're eating a Korean pastry. It is a classic. It's called Soboropang or Gombopang. And pang means bread. It is made with this sweet cookie crumble on top, with the soft and slightly sweet bread inside. It is so, so yummy. Now it's funny, if you look here, he's complaining if he could have chocolate ah, milk instead of white milk. <laughs> I love Kyun's character, he's just so adorable. Anyway, so I was just like him when I was a kid. So in Korea back then, white milk was so heavy that it really like would upset my stomach. But if you get chocolate milk back then, it was super delicious. So I totally get what he's saying. Now, I don't have a recipe for this. Uh, I will do one eventually later. But the other popular Korean pastry or bread is called uyushikbang, and I have a video for that. It is light fluffy and just melt in your mouth delicious bread so do check out that recipe <laughs> so this is called sertang poki it is not honeycomb candy it is not dalgona so if you want to go straight to the cooking demonstration on how to make poki go to the timeline that you see right here otherwise stay with me because i'm going to give you a little context of why this is called sertang poki not dalgona so this dates back to like the 70s where before they had sertang poki, it was called dalgona, but it's different. Dalgona is made using this block of white processed grape syrup and you would add that with a little bit of baking soda and then cook it the same way and until it kind of turns brown. But dalgona would not harden as it would with poki made with sugar. So dalgona you used to make it and just scoop it and just eat it like that. Eventually dalgona, the processed grape syrup block was no longer made because of really short shelf life. And instead people started using granulated sugar to make poki. Now, depending on where you live in Korea, the name is called differently. So in some areas, they call it kukja, which literally means ladle, because you would cook it on a ladle. And some of you have asked, why is it still called dalgona? So in the Seoul area, people started calling it dalgona bokki once the dalgona made with the processed grape syrup no longer existed, so that's why. And look, our shady doctor gets an insider's tip here, and it reads, 설탕 볶이. First of all, I would definitely not recommend using a ladle because a ladle is made to be a serving tool, not for you to put it on super high heat. You know, if you kind of grew up in Korea during my era in the 80s, all of us children would have gotten yelled at by our moms for using the ladle and trying to make bokki at home and completely blackening the back of the ladle, moms would come out chasing their kids for, you know, ruining their ladle. So 
Anyway, instead of using a ladle or spending your money ordering the Targona or Boki kit that you see on Amazon, I recommend using a heavy duty pan with a very, very heavy bottom. And you also need the following tools. A Korean pancake hot dog presser, a baker's scraper, and a pair of disposable wooden chopsticks. On a cool surface, add one tablespoon of granulated white sugar. This is to coat the bottom with the sugar so it doesn't stick. So if you don't have this Korean gadget, which you could get at a big, big Korean supermarket, just use any frying pan with a flat surface to just press it down. I'm gonna turn the heat up to about medium high. I'm gonna tilt my pan at an angle like so. I'm gonna put one, two tablespoon of granulated white sugar. You see how the sugar is melting around the rim? Just be patient, wait a little bit longer. So as soon as you see this bubble forming, now start mixing it with your wooden chopstick. Keep on stirring until all the lumps are gone. So there's no really science to this other than you dip your chopstick and you get just whatever you can pick up from the tip. And then you put it in here. And then this is when you just need to stir, stir, stir quickly. Take it off the heat and then stir, stir, Wait five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna take our sugar-coated topper and just gently press it down. And then up, there we go. And we're gonna take our ring like that and then pick it up, there we go. Voila! Wait 10 seconds before you lift it up and this is ready. Now, if you want to learn how to make lollipops seoltangbokki and peanut crumble seoltangbokki, make sure to check out my full seoltangbokki recipe video, which is coming very soon. So subscribe and hit that notification bell. Yep, another outfit change. <laughs> All right, episode four has hard boiled eggs, and chilsung saida, which is basically a Korean version of Sprite or 7-Up. I don't know why, but back in the 80s, like eggs were like the biggest uh, treats that you can get. Hard boiled egg was like everyone's favorite. To a pot, add six eggs and fill with cold water. Fill with enough water so the eggs are fully submerged. And we're gonna take a tablespoon of salt and add it to the pot. Set your heat to high. So as soon as the water starts boiling, put your lid on it. Turn down your heat to low medium. And then we're gonna come back in 10 minutes. Now we're gonna take these eggs out and let the eggs rest in this cold water for 30 minutes. This is to prevent the eggshell from sticking to the egg. And I know you see a scene there where you go like, you crack it on the head. I'm not gonna do it because it actually hurts. <laughs> so you instead just tap it and then peel. And then I always like to have a little bit of coarse salt and black pepper and just lightly tap it like that. Then enjoy. Episode five. So in episode five, we have oksusu, corn. And this is not just regular corn that we're used to having here in the States. This is actually called chal oksusu. It is a very uniquely Korean and it's seasonal, only available during the summer months in Korea. Gangwon province, Gangwon-do, is known for making really, really yummy chal oksusu. Chal oksusu is Gangwon-do Unlike the corn that we're used to here in the States, it is so 
thick in that cornstarch and it's not watery, but it just has that really yummy, uh, starchy corn sweet taste but not watery it's really hard to describe unfortunately these are not available in the states fresh i've never seen them fresh but if you go to a big korean supermarket go to the freezer section and you'll see them all right so these already come pre-steamed to cook so all you need to do is just heat it up so i add a quarter cup of water and seal it super tight And then we're gonna microwave this for three to five minutes, depending on your microwave power, until it's fully warm and steamed. Look at that. And then voila, you have a delicious chai oxus at home. My grandmother used to make like a dozen of these at a time and we would just snack on it all afternoon. Oh man, that's like amazing childhood memory of mine. Okay, episode six. Episode six does not have any food in it, but it's an episode full of a lot of tears and deadly glass marble game. Episode number seven has steamed potatoes, jin kamja. It is one of my childhood favorite snacks that I grew up having. Gangwon province is so well known for making the most delicious potatoes. And I grew up in Gangwon-do. I was born in Seoul, but that's where I grew up. Oh boy, let me just tell you how much I love potatoes, okay? gangwon potato is so like, it's light in taste, but it has a sweet aftertaste. And boy, oh boy, it is so good. So let me show you how to make Jinkanja. We're gonna wash our potatoes in cold water, leave the skin on, and then any sort of like brown spots like this, just take it out with your knife, like so, and here. So we're adding four cups of cold water, and then we're gonna add one and two tablespoons of salt. Place your basket and place your potatoes in the basket. Place the lid on, and close it, and then lock it. Set your heat to high and wait for the pressure to build up to maximum. Once the pressure is at maximum, lower your heat to medium low and let this cook for 15 minutes on medium low heat. And then you want to slowly release the pressure. And then how do you know if it's done? You want to take a chopstick and then poke it right in the center and it should go in smoothly. And now that means it's done. And this is best if you cool it down for at least 30 minutes so that all the moisture retracts within and it will taste actually sweeter that way. Now, you could also make this with sweet potatoes, koguma. That is Korean sweet potatoes. It is almost white in color inside. It's not the orange flesh that we're used to here in the States. And I actually have a video for that, so do check it out, because uh, it is so good. Our last episode, episode eight, has the steak. It looks delicious. It looks like a bone and ribeye to me. Koreans love steaks with sauces. So in this one, they didn't include it, which I appreciate because I personally love my steaks just with salt and pepper and that's it. So I actually have a video on how to pan sear your steak to perfection. So it has this nice golden crusty layer on, on both sides. And I also show you how to make the sauce because we love sauce, Koreans love sauce. And you could turn this into steak bites, which are so decadent. So make sure to check out that video and it'd be perfect to serve as light bites or hors d'oeuvres for your Christmas party, holiday party, New Year's Day party, or any party. 
if you are interested in seeing more dramas that include like foods and snacks that are from the similar era as the foods that were presented in Squid Game drama, make sure to check out Ungda Para, Reply 1988 and Reply 1994. Completely different from Squid Game, these are binge-worthy, light-hearted, feel-good dramas. And I'll have the links in the description box below. Now the director of Squid Game, Hwang dong hyuk I look forward to the kind of foods and games he'll include in season two. Uh, season one had so many games and food that took us back to our childhood. So it was really a great sort of um, pleasant walk down memory lane for many of we Koreans. So I enjoy that. All right, so that concludes our Squid Game drama foods. So I want to thank everyone for watching and if you enjoyed watching today's video, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you would click on that thumbs up icon and subscribe if you did not subscribe yet. 여러분 오늘 재밌게 보셨으면 꼭 좋아하는 버튼 눌러주세요. 구독 버튼도 눌러주시고요. 다음 비디오에서 꼭 뵙겠습니다. And I will see you in one of the videos you see right here.